What's up guys? Jared here with Orion Training Group. We're here at FRC in Baton Rouge at their indoor shoot house. And we're going to talk about some more considerations for exterior threshold evaluation. So, so far we've done the pie and the pan. Now we're going to talk about ramping that speed up a little bit. We've been really harping on uh, processing speed, but also the manpower, the mission, and the environment. So what if our environment doesn't drive us to uh, be able to end up on the far side of a door? Uh, we can't establish a crisscross. Or what if our team's SOP or our risk factors that we consider important are such that we don't want to end up on the far side of a door? Well, we could do a technique called a center check. I'll show it to you and then we'll talk about a couple of the considerations from the other videos. So center checking is exactly what you would think. You're simply checking the center threat area of the unknown before you commit to getting into the room. Um, once we've established that, we'll talk about some methods in other videos of how to get into the room. Now remember, when we did pieing and panning, it was nice and e you know, even movement, nice and slow, and it ended up way over here, right? Center checking is exactly what it sounds like. I'm simply checking the center, and if there's nothing there, I'm picking if I'm going left or right. So, a couple different footwork techniques. You can simply do it like it's a half pan. You're just walking to the center, and then from here, your hips are orienting into the room. You can go left or right. You can do uh, almost like, I don't know if you're, you guys watching this, you're ballet fans, but you can do like a third position or a contrapasto, snap your hips up to check the center, and you're more along this frame. You have a little bit more concealment as you get ready to launch, but when you do that, if you're too narrow left or right, you're going to have to do more footwork from the exterior to actually get into the room. So, what are some uh, risk factors to doing a center check? If we're in a team environment, and you can talk to dudes that have done this at the highest level that will say, oh, we didn't want to do center checks, we tried it. Um, we had a problem with forward momentum when we were engaging. Think about your movement drills on the range, you know, you're working the trigger and you have that forward movement. If you're doing that and you see a target and you get sucked in, you end up in the middle of the room, you're cutting off angles for your teammates. And we'll talk about that in other videos. That's one consideration because you're entering the room straight to the middle. The other one was, what if you go down right in the middle of the doorway? So some people don't like the technique because from here, if I get popped and I go down, I'm blocking the flow to do anything else around the door. Any other input on that, Jay? Yeah, uh, from the number two's perspective, if you don't have a number two guy that's really, really uh, you know, keyed up and watching the hip and muzzle awareness uh, on the number one guy, the number two can kind of misread or not have a good flow because he really doesn't know. Think about where that number one man is when he penetrates the room. He's in the center yeah. and now he has to pick a direction to go. Nothing is telling him to go left or right, but based on his hip movement and muscle uh, movement, I'm going to make the determination from what I see yep. that I have to go the other direction. So I want to minimize the amount of time that that number one man is in the room by himself. So I'm going to have to actually cheat up a little bit as he starts to go center check. And then based on his movement, I'm just going to go the opposite. We don't argue about, Hey, you went right or left. We just fill the gap, and if he went right, then the gap is to the left, and that's where I go. So it's easy fix. Um, just being uh, keyed up and turned on by what's going on with the number one man, muscle awareness and hip awareness, to get you set up for proper room entry. Right. So just to recap, the pros and cons: you need to communicate a lot as a team. You need to really have practice, like Jason said, on reading as the second man. The pro of it is we we probably have some sort of mission that's driving us to not do a full exterior uh, threshold evaluation, or we have an environment that's limiting us. And so we're getting just a little bit more snapshot rather than just rushing into the room. So pros and cons to it, right? Not saying it's the catch-all technique, not saying you have to do it every time, but it's something in the toolbox, which is why we teach flexible search the way we do. So if y'all come to a class, um, you'll get to try this out, maybe even force on force, and see if it works for you. See if you can plug it into your SOPs and just check it out. So check out all our courses at ryantraininggroup.com. Thanks for watching.